Aloha. My name is Kim Kuule Burney. I'm with Papo Ololokahi, which is the Native Hawaiian Health Board, established in 1988. And today I thought it'd be a good idea to talk a little bit about Hawaiian health. What is Hawaiian health? I think it's important for us to go back into our memories, into our traditions, and recognize that um, being Hawaiian and being healthy doesn't mean that we're going to get all the chronic diseases that we hear about or that we're going to die at greater rates. And in fact, when we look back to our kupuna, we had a very low incidence of disease. We were free of epidemic, uh, epidemics and contagious pestilence. We, uh, some of the archaeological sites show that we had very few cavities, some but very few. Our society was orderly, organized, sophisticated, and healing was used mostly for injuries. We have this long legacy of excellence in so many areas, particularly the fine arts, and you know the examples in weaving, in feather work, in um, basketry, in making tools, and making implements, hula, music. We have this high level of sophistication in so many different artistic areas. But we were also engineers, archaeologists, uh, natural resource management, uh, managers, really good managers, our whole ahupua'a system from the mountains to the sea. Uh, we were brilliant at uh, taking care of our environment and taking care of ourselves. Lokahi was very important to our ancestors. There was a balance of uh, body, mind, and spirit. And the main modalities of traditional healing, there were many, but la'au lapa'au, Lomi Lomi and Ho'oponopono were the, are the three main modalities that were used um, within families, mostly within families, to take care of one another. Um, then, of course, the first impact, 1778, when Captain Cook came, and then throughout the next several decades, the impacts of colonization on Hawaiian health were devastating. The introduction of foreign disease to uh, our ancestors, there was a breakdown of our religious system and all of the kapus that were in place. Um, there was a dispossession of land, folks moving into the city, first to Lahaina and then to Honolulu. Um, a cash-based system of economy made things very difficult uh, when we were used to a barter system and taking care of one another. And eventually, there was a gross suppression of language, traditions, customs, and values. Dr. Kekuni Blaisdell articulated this quite well. Depopulation led to Hawaiians being a minority in their own ho homeland, and eventually to extinction is what was um, theorized back in the 1970s. Colonization resulted in a loss of lands. There was a deep cultural conflict, despair and self-destruction, and the impacts of racism is how we think of the Hawaiian health status today. But that's not how we want to think of it. You know, depending on what um, database you use, at uh, the point of 1778, there were anywhere from 300,000 to a million people living in the Hawaiian Islands at that time, and within just a few decades it went down to, uh, there were 29,000 in 1900, in the year 1900. So what does it look like today? Well, uh, two-thirds, no, excuse me, three-fifths of all the Native Hawaiians that we know of in the census live in Hawaii, two-fifths live outside of Hawaii, across, spread out across 49 other states. We anticipate that that will change in the 2020 census. We'll see. Um, but we have this great legacy of our ali'i. You know, the ali'i that we think of, the Hawaiian chiefs and rulers who took care of us, they saw, they went to school together and they understood what their kuleana was. They understood what um, what they were responsible for, and they anticipated and they left their legacies to care for Hawaiians in the future. For example, and it, well, I'll just give one example. In health, uh, Queen Kapi'oleni, 
She was responsible for what now is Kapi'olani Women's and Children's Medical Center. She established one of the first maternity hospitals. Queen Emma and King Kamehameha IV, Alexander Liholiho, responsible for establishing the Queen's Hospital. And other ali'i took responsibility for education, for taking care of our kupuna, for um, taking care of our indigent and orphan children. All of our ali'i took um, responsibility. They really understand what their uh, what their kuleana was for their people, and they continued um, to take care. The legacies live on today. So in the 1970s, there was this great renaissance, and this was kind of, um, kind of post-Vietnam uh, War. You know, there were, the, there were the civil rights movement and Native American movements and the occupation of Alcatraz and occupation at Wounded Knee. And when our soldiers came back to Hawaii uh, from the Vietnam War, where they hung out with other men of color, other soldiers of color, they really started to look around and see, take a look and see what inequities there were across, um, across the Hawaiian Islands. And they just took a look around. And I think that that kind of led to a lot of different movements uh, here in Hawaii, uh, taking care of land, the occupation, uh, of Kaho'olawe and really this great awakening that led to um, led to Kaho'olawe, led to the Polynesian Voyaging Society, led to the Constitutional Convention. Many great efforts came out of that Hawaiian Renaissance. Papa Ololokahi is really pleased to be able to work with the five Native Hawaiian healthcare systems that are spread out across seven islands. They provide medical, dental, behavioral health, lots of direct services, outreach, enrollment, eligibility. They offer workshops and classes on all islands and uh, access to traditional healing as well. So no matter what island you're on, know that uh, any one of these five Native Hawaiian healthcare systems are resources to you. But really my question is, you know, we know a lot about, we're getting a lot of advice from CDC and WHO and the Department of Health, and it's really important advice, but it's common sense, isn't it? Wear your mask, keep a distance, wash your hands. So go back to the things that we all learned when we were young. What did you learn from your parents, from your grandparents? What did you learn from your kupuna that was basic common sense that we can take into our, bring into the pre present, that we can bring into the present in dealing with this pandemic and really pass along to our families as we weather this out. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about Papa Ololokahi the five Native Hawaiian health care systems, the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program, also a resource. Our website is papaolalokahi.org. And my name is Kim Ku'ule Bernie. Aloha. Mm -hmm.